First graders, it is Thursday. Happy Thursday. It is no longer raining. The sun is coming out. I hope you have a great day today and are able to get outside. I'm going to jump right into Chapter 5 of The Stampede of the Edmontosaurus. Jamie scrambled out of the crater and swept the binoculars along the line of trees. There's a whole herd of Edmontosauruses, he exclaimed. They're massive. He, cool, Tom said, hurrying to join him. The great lumbering dinosaurs were huddling together at the edge of the forest. They took nervous steps on their hind legs toward the smoldering trees and then skittered back in alarm. But they don't belong in the open, Tom looked worried. That forest must be their home. Looks like they're too scared to go back in, said Jamie. Some of those branches are still on fire. He trained the binoculars on an Edmontosaurus at the edge of the group and chuckled. I think that one's posing for us. The eddy lifted up its head and sniffed the air. It opens its mouth, showing rows and rows of flat teeth. Picture. There they are looking with the binoculars. And there it is. Those Nashers would make short work of a tree branch, Jamie murmured. Dad told me they could have they could have up to a thousand teeth. That's a lot. I wouldn't like to be a dino dentist, Tom laughed. You'd need a drill the size of a baseball bat. And a buckets of mouthwash. And half your patients would want to eat you. I wish we could get a bit closer, said Jamie. Do we have time? Tom looked at his watch. Not really. We better go. We'll be in big trouble if we're late getting back for the grand opening. Come on, Wana. They began the long walk back toward the geyser crater and the jungle beyond. I wish we could tell Dad that we've seen some real Edmontosauruses, Jamie sighed. <sighs> he turned to get one last look at the eddies and stopped dead. Oh no, he said. Look at the flames! The whole forest is on fire now. Fierce flames were shooting up into the sky from the treetops. The eddies don't like it, said Tom, and I don't blame them. Their home is burning. The dinosaurs were backing off from the trees, buffeting each other in their fear. The boys could hear their deep, anxious calls. Here they are. Suddenly, a flaming tree trunk crashed down, hitting the ground in a shower of sparks. With a terrified bellow, the herd reared away and began to run from the burning trees. Soon the run became a charge. The ground churned under their pounding feet and dust flew up around them. They're stampeding, yelled Tom, and they're heading right for us. We better get out of the way and fast, Jamie said. Come on, Wana. The boys and their dinosaur friends sprinted back the way they had come, trying to put some distance between, them, between themselves and the frightened dinosaurs. Soon, they had to dodge the small fires That's, that still burned here and there in the blast area from the first meteorite. Jamie turned to see if the eddies were still stampeding toward them. Wait a minute, he shouted. If the eddies keep running this way, they'll fall into the geyser pit. Tom slowed down, panting. We can't let that happen. We've got to stop them or turn them away somehow, Jamie said. We could wave our t-shirts at them, Tom suggested. Too small, answered Jamie. Picture, here's a picture of the stampede. It just shows their feet. But we don't have anything else, Tom said, worried. Yes, we do, said Jamie, running over to a burning bush. We'll use fire. That's what scared them into stampeding in the first place. We'll stand in front of the pit and wave burning branches. Brilliant, said Tom. Let's do it. Wana butted their legs as if to keep them away from the danger. No, Wana, said Jamie. We've got to do this. 
He broke off two crackling branches and held them high. Wana backed away, grunting in alarm. Sorry, little friend, he said soothingly, but it's up to us to save the eddies. The boys rushed over to the pit, then turned and faced the oncoming charge. Here's Wana trying to keep Jamie from going up. Jamie could feel the sparks burning from the branches, stinging his arms, but he wasn't going to give up. Ouch. The terrified Admonosauruses were thundering toward them, churning up the dust. The drumming of giant feet was making the ground shudder. Jamie looked over his shoulder to see a large crack appear near his feet. Crash! A great chunk of earth disappeared into the darkness. Now the edge of the pit was right behind them. If the crack got any wider, the boys would fall into the pit themselves. The Eddies have to stop, shouted Jamie desperately. It's their only chance and ours. Ooh, there is an epic picture. Let me show you. And the chapter's over now. Okay, let's see if I can get the whole thing. Here's part of it. There's Jamie right there. You can see him kind of reaching for that branch, holding it up high. Look at the Edmontosaurus. Pretty sweet. Well, that takes us to chapter five, which is, no, excuse me. <laughs> we just read chapter five. That takes us to chapter six, the very last chapter. And then we're jumping on to our next book. Tomorrow I will finish this book. Tonight at 7 o'clock, we have our Zoom meeting. Please have a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. If it's lined paper, no big deal. If it's blank paper, awesome. Um, yeah, you're going to be drawing, okay? I'm going to be giving you directions on what to draw. And just to give you a heads up, your microphones are going to be muted when you join the meeting. That's an option I have from my end. And it says, do you want microphones muted when people join? And I hit yes, just so. The extra loud sounds aren't there when people are first showing up, okay? Um, I, w I can unmute your mics, and I can also teach you how to do that as well. Um, I'm just doing that to cut down on some of the chaos as people are trickling in, because not everyone will be in the Zoom meeting at 7 o'clock. Some people might show up a little bit later, like 701, 702, 703, 704. Once everyone is joined, then we'll start. Um, I'm thinking the drawings will take about 15 minutes, maybe. It's not going to be that long. Um, they're just going to be pencil. If you want to color them, you can do that on your own. Um, and then show us the next Zoom meeting, what it looks like after you've illustrated them. Um, after we do our drawings, you'll have a chance to talk to me and talk to your friends and ask them questions. I really like some of you were holding up your hands in the Zoom meeting, which is perfect. That's awesome. So when I do the Zoom meetings, I have my phone set up. As that actually records me because it has the best recording quality. And then I also have my laptop, which has a camera on it uh, next to me. And I use the laptop to be able to look at everybody. Because my phone, during a Zoom meeting, my phone only shows up to four screens at a time. So I can only see three students and myself. But if I want to see everybody that's in the meeting, if there's like 12 people in the meeting, then I have to have a laptop set up. So if you see me looking over here like this during the meeting and talking... It's because I'm looking at my laptop and I'm looking at other people's faces because, like I said, my phone only shows four screens. Um, yeah, that's tonight at 7 o'clock. I already emailed your parents the information for the Zoom meeting. If they have any questions or concerns, they can email me today. I'll be checking my email several times. Um, yes, I hope I see you tonight. And if you're nervous about showing your face and you just want to... You just want to watch everyone else and listen? That's totally fine. I'd rather have you at the meeting without showing your face than not being at the meeting at all. So if, if you're nervous, that's okay. Just show up. You don't have to show your camera. You don't have to have your face shown, okay? I'm just glad that you're there. So 7 o'clock tonight. Have a good day.